What's that about? Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's Nancy Reyes with For Your Canine. And Lisa Batasca with Canine Defined. How are you? Um, thank you all for joining us. I wanted to just kind of preemptively uh, or ask, you know, you guys can share our um, our notifications about our Facebook lives with anybody you want. I know we got some questions for this one about sharing it to another group. Please share it. Uh, the whole purpose of us doing this Facebook live is to get information out uh, as much as as much as we can to as many people as we can. So yeah, please share, let them know they can tune in. They can watch it on Lisa's Facebook page on her business and her personal, my Facebook page, business and personal and Joanne's Facebook page, uh, business and personal. Joanne is uh, driving home. So she's um, not, um, she's not in, she might join us later, but yeah, please share, um, you know, the links. We'd be happy to, um, we, you know, we're happy to um, have more people on and learn more about it and, and have questions and challenge us in every way you can, because this is why we're here is for you. So you guys can learn more about different things and topics. And that's why we try to do a big, a wide range of topics and, uh, and, all, and all that. So please be, uh, you know, please feel free to share and uh, go back. You can also go back to our, all, all those pages and watch those um, episodes um, from before. So if you had questions on something, we've probably covered it or going to cover it. The other thing you might have noticed, we did start to do a little schedule about what's coming up. So then that way it's good for us so that we're not having to, you know, we have, we pre-plan it. So we can have a little bit better uh, outcome. So um, all those things said, um, today we're going to be talking about walking dogs. Um, and, and some of the emergency uh, issues to be out walking dogs. Actually, yeah, Michelle, I used to walk dogs. That's kind of, I, I started mm -hmm. it, you know, on the side. And, uh, but to be t transparent, I don't walk my dogs anymore. Um, first of all, I don't have time. Second of all, um, the loose dog situation has gotten pretty um, mm -hmm. serious and it's a big problem no matter where you live. Um, and also I used to have a lot of little dogs and, um, I really worry about the, them and, uh, the, the situation at large. Um, and, uh, one of our clients, um, actually, um, had her dog killed by a loose dog on a walk. So, and I understand some of you where you live, you have to walk your dogs. And also it's walking your dog is good for our mental health and for the dog's mental health. So that's what makes it challenging, right? It's a great activity, but it's also pretty scary <laughs> because um, because of the situation with loose dogs and, and all that stuff. So so one of the things we, uh, we thought to do is maybe have um, talk about some defensive things you can do to keep you and your dog safe and be able to, you know, have a more pleasurable experience, especially if you know what to do and, and how to handle certain situations. So, so that's why we're, we're um, doing this little, um, the Facebook live is on that, especially now that the weather's getting better and people are starting to walk their dogs more. So um, yeah. Right. Uh, and I'll be honest. I used to walk, I used to walk my dogs all the time. And now it's like, I, um, it's, it's gotten pretty bad dogs getting out people. It's just, it's the situation is, um, is dire. So, so a couple of things, one of the things I want you to kind of think about when you're out for a walk, you're out for a walk for a little bit of exercise. I know some of you, some of for some of you, it's a, it's a social situation, but I really would encourage you not to let your dogs meet other dogs, unknown dogs in um, unknown dogs on walks. I think that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. And, and while it's a, I know it's a social thing, you can go on a walk with somebody with their dogs on a parallel walk. Right. Would be, would be wonderful, but uh, allowing people, your dog to meet other dogs on walks. I, I highly discourage it unless it's somebody you ran into that, you know, and that your dogs know. Right. I think too. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm with Nancy. I don't walk my dogs. I mean, I have an opportunity. I live in a place where, I don't have to do that. Um, so, you know, we have a portion of our yard th of three acres is fenced off and stuff for the dogs to run and play. Um, but, you know, I've had loose dogs 
that have come around us and so forth. And I, I don't know them. So, you know, I always get a little concerned about that situation. Um, but I don't usually walk my dogs. I've heard of too many people, too many bad situations occur. And it's, it's very scary and disheartening because I can't even begin to imagine that happening. I mean, some of the stories are pretty, pretty gruesome. Um, so for me, you know, I'm, uh, and people are just, it's interesting. I don't understand. I don't understand why they think that their dogs can be off leash and running out of the house and stuff like that. I mean, but I I think people just have a different idea of what a dog should do. (laughs) So, um, but. Yep. And because I think most of us or a great majority of us have been in the situation where you have their dogs off leash coming at you. Uh, they're calling the dog, dog doesn't come. And then they yell to you, my dog is friendly. Uh, um, that's a, po- I think I've seen it as a poster. <laughs> Cause right. that's what we get. Um, and unfortunately they don't think about the risk they're putting their dogs in. Right. Because let's say you're, you're the one walking, uh, your dog that maybe isn't so friendly and, uh, your, your dog happens to be the one to, you know, hurt that other dog. Right. Mm-hmm. It's a really, it's a really serious situation. So, um, so one of the things we wanted, we went to a, we were recently at a Michael Sacasio um, workshop and he gave, and it was a reminder because, right, I haven't been dog walking very much. Mm-hmm. We haven't been doing it. So it's like a lot of stuff I forgot and a lot of stuff that, um, that I, I didn't even think of. Right. So that are now evidently it's a bigger problem and we have more people doing that uh, dog walking. So, so we thought, well, this would be a great topic because it's fresh in our minds and we've just, uh, uh, we just came back from that and we started to, um, uh, you know, introduce it into our classes as a reminder because we forget other people, people do like to walk their dogs. People do enjoy that time, especially as the weather gets better. So these are some of, some of the stuff we'll talk to you about today is to kind of, um, you know, let's see mm-hmm. uh, what, uh, you know, if we can incorporate or start training some of the stuff before, you know, every it's in full force and you got the loose dogs and everything running around. So, yeah, Deb, Deb, you're right. Yeah, it's people walking around on the phones, not paying attention. Um, and you that is actually pretty. With a flexi. With a flexi. <laughs> That's. Absolutely, the most scariest thing uh, <laughs> that that we see, uh, and 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 then yeah, they, it's just the phones. And but you you know, I'll be honest. I know there's a, a pretty big statistic about people who've gotten hurt, mm-hmm. right? They've really gotten hurt on, um, uh, you know, hit by a car or ran into right. uh, because they're not they're walking and they're on their phones. So it's it's a it's a pretty big problem for sure. So, Mm -hmm. um, so you definitely want to think about that, right? All right. So go ahead, Lisa. Um, no, I mean, I think too, you know, um, yeah, like anytime I take my dogs out, I have to be extremely aware of them. And yes, my dogs are trained to specific things because, you know, I like to utilize them for certain things, but, um, for reactivity particularly so that they have a dog who, you know, can be around that's not going to be reactive to the dog that is reactive. So, um, but I think it's, um, you know, you have to commit to your dog entirely. I mean, it's another relationship in life that you have to be hundred percent a part of. And if you're giving half way, you can't really fully expect your dog and be fair about it to, you know, to not, react or, you know, or to behave and stuff like that, we still claim that responsibility as dog owners. So it is a little frustrating when you see that because sometimes, you know, the dog's like off with his nose up somebody's rear end and they're on the phone or texting and you're like, that's very interesting. Yeah. No. And it's, it's one of those things that we definitely want. um, And and Lisa made a really good point. It's like a walk should be a, a very enjoyable a time to connect with your dog. If you're just doing it to just do an activity, you might want to consider maybe doing something else, right? right. Instead of walking. Cause that you, you're putting yourself and your dog at risk. And as we, as some of us mature, walks can become pretty treacherous. If you have a dog that's going to pull you at another dog 
or, or, you know, you might fall down. I had a client once come in, her face was just so bruised up and she had a very little dog and she ended up, the dog pulled her so hard and she wasn't paying attention and she fell. And she, I mean, she's very fortunate. It wasn't such a, a more serious, uh, uh, injury, but it was a, you know, it was, it was enough. So it's just one of those things you guys got to be enjoy. And that's part of having that relationship, right? Be yes. there, be present, enjoy the walk. If especially it's like, think of it as a walk with your friend, right? Yeah. You go for a walk and you enjoy the time and you get to, you know, let them smell the flowers and enjoy and just enjoy just being together. So, um, and also just to use it as a mental break for yourself. If you're on the phone, you're not, it's not a mental break, mm -hmm. right? It's not a, or you're talking on the phone or checking, you know, enjoy them. Just like the dogs enjoy the walks, enjoy the walks with them. Yeah. I think um, some people ask, well, what can you do instead? What can you do instead when um, the, you know, if you can't walk your dog or you're working on loose leash walking and stuff like that, what do you do? Well, I mean, there's other things you can do in terms of enrichment, you know, um, some things that you can do are, you know, do uh, put food in a box or put some treats and special toys in a box and then put, you know, put other things in it to help them and then give them an outlet to just to do some foraging. Um, I think that is important. Um, so if you're having issues or it's a rainy day, that's that's another consideration. I don't think we do enough of that, you know, enough of engaging our dogs on their level, um, you know, and we just sometimes we consider it more of troublesome or or what have you. But um no, I don't have any cookies. Yeah. Um, but yeah. All right. So we're going to talk about, oh, so that's the first part, right? You guys be engaged, be part of that walk with your dogs. Um, and again, have alternatives when you can't get out there and walk your dogs too. Right. So we're going to, there's a couple of emerges in, in the event that you do walk your dogs or in some cases I know like like Deb Evans and a couple of people that live downtown or live in, in a very congested or a condo that you have to walk your dogs. Mm -hmm. You don't have a choice. Um, and you are going to have that barrage of dogs. So we're going to talk a little bit about some uh, emergency techniques that you can use um, in case you, you are confronted with a, um, uh, a dog off leash or, a, or some kind of an emergency, right? Because that's the biggest thing. So I personally use this one. Uh, this was a, this is a Patricia McConnell technique. Uh, you can uh, walk uh, as you're walking. Cause I used to, again, I used to be a dog walker. Um, and I, um, one of the th techniques she said, which was pretty good was have some treats or kibble in your pocket. And if the dog's coming at you, throw it at the dog and if the, the kibble hits them, some dogs will, I mean, it may, it, you know, may or may not work depending on the intention of the dog. But many times if it's just a loose dog, chances are they're going to be like, hey, what was that? And it's going to interrupt that coming in to go visit your dog and might give you just enough time to move away. So I personally had used this technique many years ago and it worked great. Yes, exa it worked exactly as it was supposed to, thank goodness, because it won't work for every time. Uh, I tossed the treats at the dog. The dog was like, oh, what's, a, what's that? And he just spent all his time um, eating the treats. He was very intrigued by it and I threw more. So he had more to do and we were able to get away and go into and, and go um, where we had no incident. It was just a scary moment in time. Um, so that was really, really helpful. Um, so that was a really lovely, uh, really great, uh, easy technique <laughs> that we were able to uh, to use. Another one, uh, Lisa has actually uh, sent a, a video to demo it. So I'm going to uh, show you. It's, it's the same uh, idea, right? Uh, a great idea, but a little different and probably a little more effective. And the truth of the matter is, I thought this is great because you can... Um, you can absolutely, no, stop it. Uh, you can absolutely, absolutely. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Well, guys. Just, some of the, some of the questions that are, some of the comments that are coming through. Yeah. An open garage. I mean, I've been, um, yeah. Where they run right out. That's pretty scary. We had a situation where there was a dog that was, um, resource guarding the garage from people. So that was a little bit concerning. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, you know, everybody wants to kind of hang out and have their dogs around and all that, especially if you're living in some of these um, neighborhoods. But, you know, again, with a small dog, you have to be really careful because they can really get hurt. Oh, so right. this was today. So this was today. And this was uh, Lisa. This is similar technique, right? Uh, but not not with food. It's with an umbrella, which is something that we can all carry those pop up ones. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's that's a really good and that's that's a reminder technique from, uh, from um, uh, Michael Shikashio. He I was like, oh, that's a because that's pretty easy for most of us to be able to carry an umbrella, pop up umbrella. And it also gives you a little added protection there, right? If the dog comes at you or whatever. And that's something you can get pretty cheap, pretty inexpensively at the store. And um, it's 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 a great, you know, it's really good. You can um, uh, work that. However, one of the things you have to train your dog, and this is where it goes back to training. One of the things, you, uh, to one of the things you want to do to train your dog is, oh, Joanne's here. <laughs> Welcome, Joanne. <laughs> What are you doing? In and out, in and out. I'm trying to add her. There oh, you go. There. Oh. Hello, goodbye. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the umbrella, because you can easily carry that. And it's pretty simple and, and, and pretty handy and not as, you know, not so bulky. And most of us can have that, right, and carry it. So the one thing you, you – one of the things you want to teach your dog, though, which is – um. And we'll kind of give you some resources to do that. One of the things you, you want to do to to um, teach your dog is you see Lisa taught her dog to go behind her. So that's a skill your dog needs to learn, right, to get behind behind you when that's happening. So they know, they understand to get behind and stay there, right? And she did a really nice job of that. Um, so... Uh, so that's one thing. That's a skill that your dog will ha you'll have to kind of work on, and teach your dog to stay uh, behind. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, so it's like so that's something you have to work away apart from you know on your walks, and you want to be able to have your dog comfortable with that that happening, right? So I that's so that's one. Um, hi Deb. Uh, and so you want to work on that particular skill, right? For the, teach them how to stand behind you and wait while that happens. Mm -hmm. so something that'll ha you'll have to train it. So that's why that's kind of one of the reasons we wanted to kind of talk about this before the weather's starting to get warmer, you know, and all that stuff. But uh, but that, that's starting to happen. So um, yeah, and another thing for those of us that have some that uh, I think Amy mentioned. One of the things is they do sell incredibly. It's a jacket called the coyote jacket mm. that has spikes on it. So that if some, a dog grabs your little dog, it's not, it's going to hurt the yes. whatever. Right. And that's, that's pretty extreme. Uh, but in some cases where you have a lot of, um, a lot of uh, coyotes or other, if you, especially if you have a small fluffy, yep. <laughs> you're going to want to want to make sure you have that. Especially with, because um, unfortunately, what it seems like there's a lot of pitties loose in this yeah. field these days. A lot of pit bulls that are running around. And I know I'm, and, not, and again, we we got off the Dobermans, but we're gonna. Go. <laughs> but it's one of those things that I mean, it just happens that those are the dogs that you see that are loose. Not always, right? Uh, but uh, many many times, and I don't know why that is. I think maybe because more people have them. I think it's not the breed. It's just, just more people have that breed. <laughs> So those are, so those are, um, that's one, one of the, the same technique, right? Either throw food or the umbrella, but it's a, it's a, it's an option for you that you, um, that you can train your dog again, always before things get a little bit, uh, a little bit more the weather gets better and we start walking more. Um, all right. The other one I was going to, let's see. I do have that video. All right, so this one, uh, this technique uh, is switching sides, teaching your dogs to switch sides. Um, you know, uh, I don't know why it didn't, uh, on walks, I just never thought of doing that, to be quite honest with you. Uh, <laughs> so so I don't know. I mean, you do in certain situations, but 
in, in a preventative kind of way. And for those of you who have reactive dogs, um, it's a, once they're better about seeing dogs, doing that switch is really going to make life much, much happier for them. Right. So uh, here's another video. So Noel, this, in this video, Noel does. So Michael Shikashio, uh re recommends we do the cross, the switching of the sides behind you, which is <laughs> better because that way you don't fall down. But Noel has always done it in the in front, which still works too, right? If you have, if you want to practice it, I just worry about doing it in front because you can fall down. Ask me how I know. <laughs> but most of the time, you should be okay being able to cross be, cross behind you. Um, so we did a couple of demos uh, with Lukey is a little reactive um, to other dogs, but I mean he's a lot better now, obviously with a lot of training, but still. Uh, she uses this quite often. So this is her working on that. Right. And we practice, of course, with no dog. I tried to work Mr. Luke. He was very happy to, but he wasn't real crazy. There you go. Good boy. Yep. So it, it took a little bit. Ideally, you want to do this with a loose leash, people. Mm -hmm. uh, loose leash, right? You don't want, so... There you go. Yay. Right. So this dog, uh, uh, with Jill, she, uh, Francesca is, is a little bit of a, more of a puller, but you were, st she was still able to pull off that, the, you know, getting the dog on the other side, uh, even in that, even in that situation. So I thought that was really, yeah, Aaron, I don't know why it's just like, it's like, sometimes you, you know, so much you, you know, you, you forget a lot of stuff too. So that's, um, that's that. So, and so here we are using the technique the way Noel does it with another dog and it works out really, really well. And here Jill doing it behind, right? So I, I found that's that, and that's something you definitely want to work on so that it looks a lot smoother mm -hmm. uh, and a lot more effortless. We were just, practicing and, and and kind of working on how to make that smoother for um uh for you know we're trying it for the first time even though noel does the, this with luca all the time um i i don't do it all the time neither does um not and jill not as much but at dog shows you could this is a really good technique all the time but it's to make it look a little smoother and when you're on the street this is really a nice uh, nice technique if you're able to be far enough or, or if it'll keep your reactive dog from reacting uh with if you just sometimes just switching the sides is all you need to do i remember actually as a student when i went to you i taught max that my yes husband, remember yes. You're like, oh yeah and i just did a switch and he went behind me i always taught it from behind so it was interesting and then when i got into agility like don't do the behind switch remember yes <laughs> so so that's what that's the thing you guys those of you who do dog sports switching uh you definitely yeah back then you didn't want your dog running behind you right <laughs> so that was a big no no oops um but now we're back to um, when you're on a regular walk. And and back then, I think we didn't give enough, the dogs enough credit that mm -hmm. they, they knew what, that they could have made that distinction uh, without too many problems. Right. Sure. Yeah. So it was a, it's a very, very interesting um, uh, uh, thought process. Now it's like, Oh yeah, that works really good because you think about it. If you're asking them to switch sides, you're going to be on leash yep. agility. You're not. Right. So the dogs would be pretty, um, you know, they should be able to. Um, yeah. And, and so the big thing about switching sides, you guys, especially you want it to be very flawless, like no leash pulling. So ours was kind of a oh. demo, but you really don't want a lot. Of, right. Because that could become, uh, he could, that can become a, they could launch towards the other dog and all that. And then have a, then you can fall down. <laughs> Or have a problem. Um, and Joanne, um, we were we were pretty transparent in the beginning. We we both Lisa and I both said we don't walk our dogs. Mm -mm. And so, <laughs> nope. Scary. Scary. Yeah. yeah. I, I just 
I'm sure you guys said it already. I have heard of too many dogs literally dying <laughs> yeah. just from going for a simple walk with their owners. So yep. it's not worth it for me. Yep. And Lisa and Joanne uh, have yards, big yards. Dogs can run and play in. I don't. So my dogs get exercise at work when I take them to work with me. So there's pretty interesting. I don't know. I heard about this before from another, I think it was Trish McMillan or um, Sue Sternberg. They were talking about, um, there's a app. Does anybody familiar with this place called Sniff Spot? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Somebody there's brought it up here. It's yeah. very cool. It was very cool. So you yeah, can, it, was, it just came up on my Facebook feed. I don't know. I must yeah. have been thinking about it and it just. <laughs> <laughs> this you mean, right? Yeah. Well, and Sniff Spot is a great place if you can't walk, go for a walk. That's a great uh, alternative to giving your dog some exercise, right? It's right. a great, great alternative. And yeah. Then, and actually, Mer Morgan, we're going to get to that, by the way. Go ahead, Lisa. What were you no, say? you were just saying getting to the pepper spray and the yeah. So, the, so the switching, uh, standing behind, throwing treats, and <laughs> and and Mike Sucasio did say sometimes you just got to say tell the dog to go home, yeah. <laughs> which sometimes does work. I right. have to say. Uh, so there are other things. Yeah, Morgan, when I was dog walking, I did carry pepper spray. Um, a spray shield it's a citronella spray the other option is a little a little uh, noise and an air sometimes an air um little air air sprayer that they sell as well um so those are all tools that you can carry obviously uh you don't want to carry all of them but <laughs> you, you might you, you might you know some of these might be more uh, more uh, you're able to do it for more than others like for example you might be able to do the umbrella most of some of you could do the umbrella other ones um switching size it's good enough or you know um the pet you know having the spray with you when you walk your dogs is, there, is another option yeah there is uh cassie that's the, that's the thing right uh you can your dog can get sprayed too yes mm -hmm. right yeah I think too, uh, listening to Michael talk, right? Number one, don't carry multiple things because if you think you have the air can and you have the <laughs> pepper spray, that's bad. But he said too, right? Like practice. I know yeah. sometimes, you know, it's $12 a can, but it's worth it to like go out by yourself with no dogs and really learn how to use it. Right. Right. Um, just to make sure that you, you, you have your aim, you have your speed, you know where it's at in your pocket and what direction it's facing. So. Yep. And, and, and practicing is really, really important. The other thing um, that I got for my, for work uh, at my, you know, in case there's a, an, an incident uh, at work uh, is a, and this is, it's, it might scare your dog too, but it's, it's a dog safety dog. Uh, there's a dog that you can pick it up or you can, you know, scare the dog away. Um and right and so this is an option it's an it's just noise again if you have a super noise sensitive dog maybe not a great idea but uh but but it's an option right that's what we're looking at so the other thing you can uh carry is um and again like like joanne said don't carry everything pick something pl you know play with it work it at work out this one is um uh, I think this is a, yeah, it's a, yeah, this is a, hold on. This is one that just sprays, um, it's a, it's called pet corrector. It's like a air, air sprayer, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a hissing spray. So, um, that works as well, right? Again, it, it depends on what you need, but it's something to have. Uh, we have all three because in case because we're also looking to uh, pre prevent dog fights in mm -hmm. at our place, but um, and not that we've had that many, but it's still a good. Uh, Anytime time we work with dogs, it's always a possibility, right? At, we, this, at the shelter, we have like uh, we have, I'm putting together a kit and stuff, which includes a bite stick, right? You know, so right. you know, and then how to properly handle that and stuff, right? And we have been uh, after after um, watching Michael's uh, seminar. Uh, we've been very lucky. We have not had to use any of those things. So, 
<laughs> but I thought, you know, it's probably not a bad idea to be prepared in the event that happens. So now we do have, we will have um, kits around in case there's an altercation with uh, a couple of dogs. Like I said, we have been good. Most of our our clients are great. They keep their dogs where they're supposed to, and it's usually not an issue. But you know, it's better to be prepared and never need it than to ne to need it and ne have it. So, um, so uh, we put together what uh, he calls a, uh, a, a a a fight kit for <laughs> if we have. But those are all possibilities. And like Joanne said, you definitely want to practice doing all of those things so that when you need it, it's a no brainer. You already know what to do. So, uh, so I wanted to show, uh, so if you had, uh, an emergency situation where you had to, um, uh, hand, you know, you want to practice how you're going to hold the leash because now that becomes a bigger issue if you're going to have to pull out something or the umbrella or use it in that way and and you don't have, you know, you don't have that, um, you know, you don't, you don't have that leash control. So we're, I'm going to play a little bit of the video. So you can, this is all online. You can have access to it anytime you wish. Um, Mike Shikashio does a lot, ha, has a lot of free stuff on his website as well. And I will, uh, definitely point you to that. So faster if I have the leash short, um, and again, we need to have good, good leash handling skills to make sure it's kept slack because we know tight leashes are our enemy, right? So you see me handling the leash on the same side here. Um, and I'll show you why in just a moment. So this is basically what it looks like when I'm working with dogs. This is my past dog, Kenji. Um, whether you're on a rear clip, front clip harness, if you're using a wide flat collar, whatever you're using, the leash should be shorter uh, when you're in defensive handling in necessary environments like the city or going for your walks when off-leash dogs are approaching or a propensity to approach. So this next video demonstrates what happens when the leash gets tight. And you'll see here, um, this is an actual previous client's dog that had issues with other dogs. This is a good example of when a leash gets tight, it's like pulling the trigger on a gun. It actually can make things much worse. So there's another argument for having good leash handling skills so we don't inadvertently create an issue. So as soon as the leash gets tight, that's when the dog uh, responds in that manner. And a lot of dogs will do that because of one. So that is why you want to have some good leash handling. It's so important. <laughs> it's like, and that's why you don't want to let dogs meet on walks either for the same reason. Right, they will. You will cause problems where there shouldn't be any. Right. What's crazy though is most people like when they're greeting dogs. I've noticed. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Lisa. Sorry. 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 Hold on. I'm hitting buttons. Keep talking, Lisa. <laughs> no, pay no attention. Yeah. Um, no. Um. I. I it was interesting. There was. Um. um Remember, uh, the leash handling part super important because I've seen people like greet dogs and they're on a tight leash. And I'm like, w w what are you doing? Don't do that. So, you know, I'm not a big fit. There's ways to, you have to teach it. Right. And for me, most and first and foremost, if my dog needs to be attentive to me and able to split attention with an other dog present, then, you know, if they can do that and they have a calm, cool head and the other dog's body language looks OK, I might allow it. But if I don't know that dog, most likely I won't just because I don't know for sure. Um, the other thing is, remember, who was it? Ter was it Tara? Remember the Doberman Tara? I don't know if you guys oh, yes. know. Yes. And it was crazy. Like you had a leash and she's like, hi, how are you? The leash is loose. It's slack. Then all of a sudden it tight, rah, 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 super <laughs> reactive. And it was just tight, loose. And it was crazy. And so I think a lot of times we don't understand that. And plus, if we're teaching them to pull into pressure, we're teaching them to pull towards something they want, right? right. So undoing some of our skills that we've been working against. 
Um, you know, but I think um, lots of times when people let them greet, they're always on a tight leash. And I'm like, that's not cool. Don't do that. So. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I think too, for me, you know, in my, I mean, just as a training basic obedience classes, right. What I find is when you use the phrase, go ahead and shorten up on that leash a little bit. Right. It's choking. Like, it immediately comes into that, right? Yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, shorten, don't tighten. Right. So I think it's, it's funny when you go like in the general public, it's like either they get the full six feet or they get two inches. Right. And they're like, Bleh. so I think being able to, if you really want to work on it, practice, you know, on 12 inches of leash, how do you keep your dog on a loose 12 inches of leash? Right. Like, or yes. maybe don't start with 12 inches, but work to that right? right how can you keep a loose leash with, with when they don't have a, a big long leash on them so right sure. all right so uh yeah because that's true oh, yeah, six feet or 15 feet or 30 feet whatever you're using it for uh, and on the opposite sides that's fine um, again just for the purposes of this webinar same side handling so this is opposite side handling which makes me lose valuable time so if i if this dog was to try to bite me I would lose too much time because I'm not, I'm not going to be able to get that dog away from me. So I want to make sure it's same side handling. If this dog was to try to bite me, that dog wouldn't try to bite me. But if she did, um, if she was having a bad day, I'd be able to get her away from me very quickly. So very basic fundamental concepts there as you're watching there. So we'll continue to build on those. Um, now we're looking at more emergency techniques. So if the leash was in the wrong hand, I wouldn't be able to do a technique like this, so an emergency hip turn. Um, those of you that have shoulder injuries or issues with mobility, um, I find it a lot easier to, to use your hips because most of your strength is in your hips and that's your center of gravity area. So when you do those turns, if you picture locking your hand up against your hip, so hand to left hip, if we're doing tag teach, and then you take your other hand, hand over hand, you're going to have a lot more strength. You can make those U-turns. Um, so here's what it looks like in action. Now, she's unfortunately trained pretty well, so she doesn't give me the same reaction as trying to pull a big dog away, but um, this gives you an idea of the concept. Right, and that is an that's what it's for. It's an emergency hip turn to be able to get away. Again, not uh, again. It's not always practical in every scenario, but it's uh, it's part of the um, uh, part of the part of the protocol. So here, he's gonna kind of go over where that Le what Lisa did here was. Hold on one second, and this is of course was. Oh, treat bombs, which we talked about. Uh, we'll play it real quick, which we talked about the treat bombs with the dogs that we discussed, and he's going to give a, give a quick demo of that. A handful of treats and throw it right at the dogs that are coming at you, dog or dogs, as your first step. It's kind of the nicer thing to do before we move into some of the other techniques. Of course, they're labs. <laughs> <laughs> So, one little other key concept there is the inside U-turn. Um, so when you're turning away, now we all prefer the emergency U-turn, right? You switch it. The dog's on your left side, you make that right turn. You got to be careful with that because now I'm placing my dog in direct line of fire there. And they're kind of going to be looking right at that, the thing coming out, whether it's a person or other dogs. So, so get the inside U-turns as well as your emergency U-turn. Those are the things you're going to want to train, of course, before you try to put that in place during an emergency scenario. But if I got the leash on the same side, I'm able to do that a lot easier than if I'm cross body leash. Right. So, um, so here it is again. So she's kind of behind me too. That's another concept: is to have leash dogs to get behind you if there's off leash dogs coming at you. Because if she's way out in front of me at all six feet of the leash, it's really very difficult to do with that scenario. I can't 
don't use the treat bomb because I'm not going to be, it's going to be kind of almost falling right in front of my own dog as the other dogs are approaching. So positioning is really important. So I've got her slightly behind me and to the left, and I'm allowed kind of placing myself to deal with the oncoming dogs. So these off leash dogs are running. I'm able to do this. And then when I make that turn, I go left rather than right. And I just noticed something as I was playing that back. Another little thing here, you can see where she's trying to dart around me to my right. But again, because the leash is short enough and I've got her on the same side, it prevents her from actually doing that. So I'm going to pause here real quick for a quick... Um, so see, uh, for and I know, and Joanne and Lisa can jump in here really quick. One of the things he talks about is having having a uh being on the same side when you're walking uh and instead of the cross and it's cross body and i'll be honest i have been teaching more the cross body uh mm -hmm. handling for a long time uh for a long time because most of our clientele they have a little more uh, control that way but now you can see where this is maybe gonna be something that you might have uh Two different, depending on the scenario, how you'd handle it. Also, he mentioned about he has two, you know, two feet, you know, a shorter leash, so the dog isn't able to get away. That doesn't mean that you're going to walk your dog on, you know, you want to enjoy your walks, but you can, you want to be able to get some quick control of your dog if you see some dogs coming. So you can have, you can give your dog that, and if you get to a good spot, you can say, okay, go sniff or go check that out or whatever it is uh, in order to be able to do that. Um, so that does not mean that you're going to just, you know, <laughs> keep your dog on this much leash, because that's not a fun, that's not a fun walk either. So just putting that out there. I think too, I, I guess leash handling is like a, an art. It is just so important and I don't think we I think as as trainers we're not focusing on that because that's not what people want to know about but it is so critical to when you're working with a dog I mean if I'm working with a dog who's super reactive or potentially can redirect on me because they get frustrated or whatever because remember if they're pulling into pressure you're increasing arousal their arousal goes up um, they're frustrated so that's a prime place for bad things to happen. But I just don't think, I mean, I'm trying to get better at doing that, but I have to tell you, it's been really tricky because I don't feel a lot of people are really take it that seriously. Have you, have you guys seen any of that? Yeah. I think the things with a lot of this stuff, right, is yes, we know we've, we've all heard the stories and we know, but it just, doesn't hit home until it's your dog or somebody super close to you, right? That loses a dog or gets a dog attacked. And I mean, I think too, once that really happens, there's a lot of people out there who really do suffer some PTSD with that. Right. And they're like, I just rather not go for a walk anymore. So it's, it's a hard, it's a hard topic. Like how do you make people understand how important it could be? Right. It's like how many people have a, I don't know, a fire extinguisher in their kitchen. Like for real, how many people have it? Mm -hmm. I do now. You know <laughs> what I mean? I didn't before, but it's so you, you really prepare for the worst when you've been through bad things. And so I don't know. It's like sometimes how do you share that? How do we get that information out there? How do we get people to understand how important it is? Right. So uh, Julie, yeah, I, um, that technique, you know, a lot of times dogs that, yeah, dogs that are reactive and they're just, you know, they're more reactive when they're on leash. And many times if they're loose or you drop the leash, it'll be less of an issue. However, at times <laughs> it doesn't matter and they will go after another dog. So it depends on, it is, it does depend if the dog is fearful or worried and they have their backup that they'll, you know, that that works. Uh, but sometimes, like, I wouldn't probably, I, I'll i be honest, I practice that when it's dogs that I know very well as an instructor. If I know the dogs well, absolutely, totally will do that uh, and work on it. And uh, I know Mindy has been through that, uh, Melanie's dog, quite a few dogs. We've used that technique and it works great because they're not really, they don't mean it. They're pretty, they're just um, worried. So dropping the leash or letting them go and taking away their backup works well. But there are dogs 
unfortunately that uh, good now i can get there <laughs> so it's something to, to consider right and i think yeah follow watch the body language to tell you what's going on in that dog's head i also think it's a timing thing as well i mean if a dog's been used to being walked on a tight leash um um what i would you know then of course that person needs to look at you know if the dog is responding and is the timing proper i remember when we were in Schiller Park, um, there was that Rottweiler and I had Lacey. Now, I don't know if you remember this. My heart was pounding because the la the lady, she was a very small lady and the, the Rottweiler like weighed, weighed, she weighed maybe 90 pounds soaking wet. The Rottweiler is well over that. <laughs> you would drag her through the, through the, uh, through the um, parking lot. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So we're working on reactivity and I had Lacey and Lacey was like, you know, she was just sassy. So this dog is at the other end of the leash and the lady like drops the leash. I'm like, oh, my, my <laughs> dog, no. And I'm like, go get him, Lacey. And Lacey just walked up to him slow. And he's like, oh, what were you eating? And smelled her mouth. And what I have to tell you to do that was really scary because I'm thinking to myself, the worst, what do you do? And I had, I suspected this dog was, um, was not, was, uh, wasn't going to react in a very violent manner. However, I took a risk, right? And, you know, if you ask me, would I do that again? No, no. I wouldn't. <laughs> I did it because I was like, ah. but knowing more now, there's no way that I would put myself yeah. in that situation. Yeah, because it really depends on the dog and how that's going to react. Yeah. And then Doris talked about when a reactive dog is approached by unleashed dogs, how to handle. The chaos. Well, there's a couple steps here, Doris. Yeah. Um, ideally, uh, you, you, you want to give your dog some skills, right? When they're out there, auto check in, get behind you, all those things. Because those, that will help your reactive dog know that you're going to take care of it. Um, and that's what uh, we talked about, the treat bomb, uh, the, tr the treat bomb or the umbrella to help you. Uh, yes, and that's what I mean. And what Joanne said earlier was, Practice what you're doing, the leash handling, all of that on a regular basis so when you'll have it when you don't need it. That's why if you have the leash on, on one hand where the dog is shortened, that'll give you a little more control, right? Uh, they'll give you a little bit more control as a dog's approach, and you can use the umbrella or the treat bomb, <laughs> pepper spray, or whatever you have. So that's why the one leash handling is going to be helpful in that situation. Right? One, other, one other thing, Doris, if you're talking about your littles, um, one other thing you can do is if you're walking out and about and there's a truck bed that's open or a garbage can, I know that sounds terrible, but you can pick them up and put them in there, right? Um, if you think that your dog is in harm's way, that's another option until, you know, but that's another safety measure. And Mike Shikasho talked about that. So did Trish McMillan. I'm sure many other people have thought about that too. But um, the other thing too is get something in front of you. If you're carrying a bag, you can do that as well. You know, if, the, if none of the other stuff you're doing is working, then you have to go into protective mode, right? So those are things to think about too. Uh and Aaron was talking about, yes, he was doing the hip turn with the treat bomb. So, yes, first you obviously would do the treat bomb or the umbrella thing, and then you would turn around and leave if that's a poss if that's an option for you, right? Because it may or may not be depending on how the loose dogs um, handle that, right? So you want to have – and you want to work – turn your dog to the right and to the left so the dog understands that. And teaching your dog to go behind you is helpful on leash on a walk because then you're able to uh, – maneuver things uh in a in a pretty big in a good way and uh and you guys can jump in on this so here's the thing you guys have multiple dogs and you're walking multiple dogs and you have one reactive dog or a little pack of reactive dogs mm -hmm. you got to work on them individually first before you take them on a walk yep. just saying right yep. I think like, and for me, like I, when I rehearse or I'm walking around with my dogs and I just walk up and down the lane cause I feel safer. <laughs> so there's nobody around us. Um, 
just the corn. Nobody can hear. Um, but what happens is um, when I walk with them, I'll pair up different dogs. So if I know one dog's having leash walking issues, I'll pair it up with a dog that has better skill. And then hopefully hoping that some of the mimicking will happen or, you know, I'll be reinforcing the dog who's walking nicer. But yeah, I oftentimes recommend if you do have a dog who's having issues, you really need to set it up where um, you're doing one at a time, teach the skill individually, and then start to add pairs together depending on the number of dogs you have. Right. Right. Because so. um, I had that problem. I had four littles mm -hmm. <laughs> and two of them were reactive. So I had to uh, walk, uh, train Bandit to shut up on a walk uh, and get that before. And then, so that means I did a lot of walking then. Mm -hmm. back in the day. Uh, and then I did them separately. And then I do, a, and then like Lisa did a combination of different ones so that I can, because, you know, I know those of you who have multiple dogs, um, you know, walking, you know, walking multiple dogs is, you know, easier because you don't have to do multiple walks. You can only do one walk. But the truth is, it is, it's dangerous if you have dogs that are, because if you have one, re, unfortunately, mm -hmm. one reactive dog and one non-reactive dog, I hate to tell you, the non-reactive dogs, the, the reactive dog's not going to learn from the, that. It's going to unfortunately go the other way. <laughs> Haven't you found that that's true? Yes. They don't learn the good stuff. They learn all the bad stuff. So, well, and I, think, and I think the other thing, too, you have to be careful of or pay attention to is if you have a dog who redirects, right? Yeah. That's, I'm like, uh, don't be walking that dog with the other dogs. Work that one individually and so forth. And, you know, but if you get those redirectors, whether they'll redirect on you or the other dog, then you have a mess in your hands right in front of your eyes. And I've seen that happen too. And uh, yeah, it's like, let's see what happens. Get the popcorn. No, I was like, I don't know. How <laughs> I didn't really enjoy watching it, but um, <laughs> I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do here? And then people have to jump in and help separate dogs, which is, yeah. you know, not really, not really fun. Yeah. Especially in that very emotionally, yeah, you're like, because right. do do? one of the things, you, the, one of the things that you have to remember is to stay calm and not be hysterical and be able have your wits about you. That's why training it and working on all this stuff is really, really important because then when you need it, there won't be so much care, chaos, Doris. <laughs> There'll be much less of it, right? Because the dog won't be, um, you know, you'll be more calm and the dogs will be a little bit more calm. So. Uh, I was going to ask, so I know, because Joanne, you don't walk your dogs together, do you? Not walk, but even, I know you don't walk, go for walks, but I mean. Yeah, I do walk um, Noah and Fire together. Okay. So. And, and that's going in and, and, she, and that's going in from, you know, from one place to another. Yep. There's no issue of. Um, there's no issue of redirection or anything like that because no, I mean, and surprisingly, I, I, they just don't have issues that create that right now. I, she, she does redirect like when we talked about a few weeks ago, like mealtime, right? So when she gets aroused about food, <laughs> she will redirect, but no, I, I mean, they've just been really, they kind of ignore each other, which to me is more so what you want when yep. you're walking two dogs together. Right. 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 Um, and like I said, walking, if you're, if you have two reactive or you have a young puppy, or if you have an older dog that may be reactive, you definitely don't want to walk your young dog with it because it's going to, it's not going to, uh, not, nothing good will come of it. And I don't know. And this is a tough call, but I'd be so worried to walk a puppy these days. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because if they have a bad experience, it's just, it's bad if they have a bad experience on a walk. It's just, it, it's just, um, it's awful. Sometimes though, I mean, sometimes I've recommended people to go to like an industrial park to walk their dogs so that they can have some time to be able to be with them because you're less apt to come across that. But I've also, you know, you still risk a run, you know, you still risk the potential of running across a loose dog regardless. Um, but you still have to be prepared for it. But, um, 
if you're like, if I, you know, dealing with, and I know you guys have too, where you've had a dog who's been real sensitive about walking through a neighborhood because, oh, this dog, they have an electronic fence and it's getting charged and they're barking at it. I'm like, change your path. Don't go that way. Don't put that dog in that kind of conundrum because it's not. Do you like how I put that in there? Conundrum? Um, <laughs> uh, put it uh, because it's not fair to the dog, right? So those are some things to think about. Um, well, yeah, you know. because we get so set in our ways about it's got we got to walk that way. Why? Mm -hmm. Why do you have to go that way? <laughs> well, and and here's the thing. I I know we are creatures of habit, and we like going the same way. We enjoy the same. But I have to say, part of the fun of going for walks is looking and seeing different things. Yeah. So changing your path every so often is so much. So much more fun, right? Or like get in the car and drive somewhere else, you know, to another place where maybe that's a different adventure for your dog, right? So it's one of those things you want to kind of be be flexible on that. Don't be married to oh, you have to, you have to, we have to walk this way. We have to, you know, whatever. Oops, I'm just reading a remark here. Yeah. yeah, I I remember reading Amy's story. She's a, a friend of mine on Facebook, and it was just it was horrific. I mean, this dog, I I don't understand. And Amy, maybe maybe something happened now, but did the police get involved? Because I mean, in this scenario, that is a dangerous, dangerous dog. That I mean, in my opinion, and I know in Iowa, at least in Scott County, where you know I'm local too, um, if something like that happens. The animal control usually gets involved, and when the damage is that severe, right, that an that animal's deemed vicious. And so if you don't euthanize the dog, then even in its own backyard, it's forced to have a muzzle on any time yeah. it's outside the house. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, if maybe, maybe it was too rural or, you know, something didn't happen. But, I mean, to me, Amy, I would... If animal control didn't do anything, I might be going to your public officials. I mean, if this dog is still out there at large, yeah, I, I guarantee you, you're not the only one, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. There was, um, we had a, a situation, I think it was last summer, where there was a dog that was walking. It was an older, um, it was an old dog, um, an Aussie. Um, and what happened was... Um, they were just walking in the park. It was one of the first great days and stuff like this, this older couple. And they had this dog and, and um, a couple of people I knew were at the event um, or had been there or had heard were called to it. Um, what happened was another dog had gotten out or had was out, had a muzzle on the owner took off the muzzle. The dog took off after the other dog and killed it in front of them. And it was gruesome. It was horrible. And I was beyond livid with that because that is not okay ever. You know, we can't have dogs like that in our communities. I'm sorry. It sounds horrible. Um, but those dogs, you have to change. You have to change. Um, we need to understand that that dog cannot live in a community situation. And that owner was extremely irresponsible and should have been charged. And unfortunately was not, nothing happened. Well, and I think that's, dog. Yeah, but that's the problem. And to Emmy's point, right? Nothing happened, so there's no. so there's no no consequence, right? So, and, and I think a lot of the a lot of our we definitely like Joanne said de definitely need to talk to the officials about leash laws and enforcing them because that's why we have so many loose dogs because there's no consequence for it, right? So it's something yeah. to something to really look at at as a citizen, right? Talk to your local official or, you know, depending, you know, I think everybody has aldermen and all that, except in Louisiana where they have parishes. <laughs> uh, but it's one of those things you want to definitely, you know, what, what are, what are some of the repercussions? What are the things that we can do? Um, and what, because the truth is until they start getting hit where it hurts, you know, yep. the pocketbook, yep. uh, nothing's going to happen. Right. Right. Well, I mean, happen. let's be serious. If the dog went and attacked a person, oh. <laughs> a person, there'd be serious consequences for that. Right. I mean, well, Mike Shikashio, they've been saying how like what is the average uh, settlement for a dog bite case is fifty five thousand dollars for fifty five thousand dollars for a dog to bite a person and they take it to court. That's a settlement potential. So, I mean, 
Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That's a lot of money. (laughs) So (laughs) good timing. Um, But no, in all seriousness, though, I mean, you know, those dogs, I mean, if a neighbor of mine adopted a dog or got a dog that I knew was vicious or would want to thing, I would have big problems with it. I would go to my officials for that. That is dangerous. Yeah, that might be. Nothing's going to happen. Right. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. He he wouldn't respond to attorneys. So it was dropped. I mean, I I would just take that up the chain. Right. Usually it depends on if you're city or county, but. I mean, animal control is usually the police or it's the sheriff's office. So, you know, if animal control officer isn't doing anything, I would take it up. Go ask to talk of the chief of police or your local sheriff and just, you know, I, I, I just, I'm not saying that you're not dealing with it, Amy, but like, right, if you took that to the sheriff and said, this is the fourth bite and they, you know, almost killed my dog, you know, if nothing else, if you're not going to prosecute on an animal then it's destruction of property. If that's how you're going to look at it, this it's destruction of property and I want restitution, right? I'm giving your, make them pay your vet bills at least. Right. 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 Yeah, I know. They got to get hit where it, where it hurts, which is yeah, really- for sure. And so unfortunately, sometimes what's happening and I don't know um, if anybody knows this, but um, what's happening, particularly in our area, the funding is going away for some of the animal care and control areas. So they're losing that. Right. So then those areas go without any kind of, you know, and and what's happening if there are loose dogs and you call to see if somebody can take them, um, they're saying, are they biting anyone or hurting anyone? No. Okay, well, then leave them loose. So and it's like, what? I mean, I I, we grew up and we got tickets because my dogs were running, you know, running at large. Right. And (laughs) I know. And now it's like anybody can run at large and it's not a big deal. But. Um, it, it's kind of crazy because now I, I, last year, I think it started happening where the funding started changing and I'm not sure why or what, but then the dogs were either loose or then they're getting pushed into other areas that aren't necessarily the areas and that shelter, that area is becoming overwhelmed with some of these dogs and stuff. So I don't know if anybody else is experiencing that. And then in the South, you know, um, what they do is. Um, in the South, they had a, um, they have one particular person in the South. They don't have all the little countries and towns don't have these animal care and control. So what they'll do is they'll pay somebody specifically who has property to house the animals. And then they are the ones that they take the dogs to so that then they're overwhelmed. I mean, we, there was one group that was like, had like over a hundred, like maybe 200 dogs. And none of those dogs were getting the care they needed because they're overwhelmed. So yeah. it, it's kind of a vicious thing with our dogs at loose. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and that on top of just owners that don't pay attention, the dog got out, the gate got open, oh. um, you know, fluffy, the kids let the dog out, uh, <clears throat> uh, all those things on, on top of that, on top of everything else. And yeah, and that's, you know, that becomes a whole big, uh, and, and I, I think it's something that to be looked at. And maybe maybe that's a nice, good topic for a Facebook Live, right? Talk to the uh, the counties and stuff and see how, what what you know what are some of the what are some of the options we have to be able to take care of some of these uh, issues and problems that have been. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Amy, <laughs> but we're Hi. trying to we're try our goal here was to try to prevent that from happening and by getting more people. Uh, more people uh, prepared and able to to deal with um, loose dogs and dogs coming up on other dogs, it would be it, you know just try to prevent some of the the issues from happening. You ever lose bison in your area? Yeah, rural. I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> Although I've heard of some wild horses over in Gary by us. I'm like, wow. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Anyway, I'm hoping that some of these techniques, the umbrella, all those things, you can also go to Mike Shikashio's uh, website where you can see some of the video, um, see some of the video, um, you know, on on some of these techniques. Mm -hmm. And um, Amazon sells all the things that that we talked about so you can practice and, you know, like practice on working on it. 
practice getting your dogs used to it so that you can be prepared for the summer as it comes. And uh, we have more dogs that are running, running amok. And again, uh, we, none, the three of us don't work our dogs anymore. For me, it's a time issue. And, uh, and now I have bigger dogs, so I don't worry about my dogs being hurt so much as much as I do for my little littles. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, and Mike's Michael's website is aggressive dog. Dot com, and he has all, you know, a lot of the videos and stuff there for your perusing and, and just information on how to be more defensive and be more on the, on the lookout. But this is just to get you ready as the weather warms up as, as things get, um, people are out and about more so that you can all be prepared and not have these terrible experiences that some of you have had with your dogs, with other dogs being loose and running up on there. Um, yeah, Amy, I, 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 yeah, it's, it's really, it's, it's, and, uh, you know, the, and one of the, I think a lot of the contributor factors to this issue too, is people think their dogs should be able to play together and be together. It's like, my dog's friendly and all that. It's, I think it's a, you know, they, they, they want to be, it's like, no, they don't need to be everybody's friend. Right. So right. that's a, that seems to be a big and, contributor to the problem. And, right. and in other countries, they don't have this kind of issue as much as we do. Right. I mean, I'm like, wasn't it what John Rogerson had said yeah. that in England, they don't have dog parks or, and then even when you walk your dog, if you, um, they, if they potty, it's frowned upon if they potty in someone else's yard and everything. I'm like, well, we're not going to get that extreme, but can we just have everybody on leash? That'd be nice. But yeah, but there, yeah, Europe doesn't have the issues that we do. So. Anyway, I'm hoping this was helpful for you. I hope that you got something out of it or something that you can at least when you go on your walks, you can have a little more enjoyable walk because the truth is if you're prepared uh, for your walk for the walks and be more present as we talked about in the beginning of the of the of the live is like be more present, be more you know be part of the walk, enjoy the walk with your dog, not just doing your duty and also if you if you don't feel like walking your dog that day, do something else to get them mentally engaged, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to walk them unless that's, um, uh, you know, so you can do something else. You don't have to walk them every day. Do, you can think of other things. Yeah, the person gets the hint. Yeah, well, and I'm lucky. I, I have a big German Shepherd, so nobody wants to come over by me. <laughs> It's usually, usually less of an issue, uh, depending on the breed you've got. So there you go. <laughs> Walk the bigs and the littles together. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Uh, have a great, um, have a great rest of the weekend, and uh, be careful on those walks. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye.